today I'm going to be walking you through the three different arrival styles we have for our 3D source object. So if you click on one of our sources when it's added to a model, in your quick properties underneath the source um, section of the properties panel, you'll find an arrival style. And there are three different options we have available to you, the inner arrival time, the arrival schedule, and the arrival sequence. I'm going to walk you through all three of these different options and show you how they work. So the first one we're going to look at is our inner arrival source. This is the one that normally comes in with by default. You're able to change that if you'd like. Um, and in here, what you're doing is you're putting the time between arrivals, so almost like attack time um, for when things are going to enter your system. Now this could be a solid value or it can be a distribution. In my case here, I've set it up to be a triangular distribution from three to with a max or with a min of three, a max of six, and a mode of five. Now by doing this, I'm just putting in that time between those arrivals and it also over here you'll see that it's in seconds. So they're gonna come in that time in seconds. So up here I've got a clock so you can kind of see that. And then down here I've also got a dashboard that'll show you a histogram of these arrivals as the model's running. So you'll kind of see that we have a min of three, a max of six, and a mode of five. So if I reset and run this, and I start getting things coming in here, I'm gonna run it fast so we can kind of get a nice looking histogram here. We're able to see we kind of have this um, min down here near three, the max near five, there's my three right there, and then we've got this peak at about five. So between 0.9 and five seconds um, is my peak. Um, so it's using that distribution to create this nice um, arrival, inner arrival time for these items coming out of this source into um, this queue that are then processed. So that's our inner arrival time. It's just showing you that you just basically get to put the time between arrivals. The next one we have is our arrival schedule. And for this one, um, when you change it to an arrival schedule, you get a table. And in this table, you get to specify at what time you want things to arrive. And these are in model units. So I've got it arriving in seconds because this model's in seconds. So at zero seconds, I'm going to have nothing arrive. At 10 seconds, I'm going to have two things of type one that come in. At 20 seconds, I'm going to have two things of type 2 that come in. And at 30 seconds, I'm going to have two things of type 3 come in. And you can have as many rows in this table. You just add them by using these arrows, or you can just type in the number of rows you want. Um, by default, you have the arrival time column, the item name column, and the quantity column. But if you'd like to add any labels to them, you can just add additional columns, put the label name up here and the value you want associated with it in the column. So in this case, I have it set, so I have types one, two, and three. I've also set it up um, so that this schedule is repeating. So it will repeat, as soon as it finishes, it'll repeat itself over and over again. Um, so I just have that repeating schedule, so at time, Zero will have nothing, 10 seconds will have um, type one, 20 seconds will have type two, 30 seconds will have type three, at 40 seconds will have type one come back in, 50 seconds type two, so on and so forth. And to kind of demonstrate that so you can see that that's working properly, I've created this dashboard that's the um, arrival schedule width by type. So you're able to see, you'll see a jump at each of those time units, and again, they're in seconds. Um, and they'll arrive and you'll see it jump two of the um, corresponding types. So if I reset and run this one, we'll see nothing comes in at time zero. I'll speed it up a little bit. At time 10, we have two reds. At time um, 20, we had two greens, 32 blues, 42 reds, 52 greens, um, and so on and so forth. So we're seeing it's repeating that because I have that schedule repeating. And so we'll have two arrive of the different types every um, 10 seconds. The last arrival style we have available is our arrival sequence. 
And when you select arrival sequence, again, you get a table. In here, by default, you just have an item name and a quantity. And then, like the other, t um, like the arrival table, you can add in a label. Um, so in this case, I also have type added. And what I'm going to do is um, have three of type one, three of type two, three of type three, and it'll kind of run this sequence. There's no time associated with it, so I'll just create them in this order. I've also set it up again so it's repeating like I did with the schedule. Uh, so it'll repeat the sequence, so it'll do three of one, three of two, three of three, three of one, three of two, three of three. Now because there's no um, time associated with this, it's just basically limited based off of the size um, of items allowed in this queue. So in this case, I just have it set to nine. So you'll notice when I reset and start running this one, it had it has three reds, then three greens, three blues, and then it goes reds, greens, and blues again. So it's going to keep on cycling through these because I have it repeating and I've got it in a sequence. So it'll just create those things in that order instead of having any time really associated with them. So you're able to see that things arrive in that order and you kind of will always have um, a certain quantity in this queue of reds, greens, and blues. So those are our three different arrival styles that we have available from the source. And this model shows you those three different styles.